John Peterson, I've known you for decades, and I know you as the founder of the Arlington Institute and as the author of some of the most interesting books uh, on predicting the future, or at least analyzing and preparing for the future. I think you're one of the broadest minds that I know to include getting all the way out there on directed energy and stellar civilizations, uh, 5G and, and bioacoustics, the whole nine yards. You, you are one of the most balanced, broadest people I know. Now, we've agreed that today I'm just going to give you the mic. So you have some positive thoughts for us as we go into what may be one of the most tumultuous two days in American modern history. Well, thank you, Robert, for the always, always kind words. Uh, and thanks for the chance to chat a little bit. Uh, I wanted to take about 15 minutes here and build a big picture, a scenario, kind of a logic stream of a way to think about what's going on right now in the world and uh, in general, and in particular, what the implications are for the next days and weeks. And uh, you got to start with this picture at a very high level. And uh, this is about the evolution of humanity. Uh, this is a, about the, hum the evolution of our species, literally. And uh, uh, anybody, I think, of a reasonably open mind who looks into this subject at all uh, will come to the conclusion that we're not the only guys living in this part of the universe and that there are extraordinary other numbers of other planets and other species that are around. And in fact, if you study this at all and you study it again with a relatively open mind, what you find out is that there are any number of communications, unconventional admittedly, uh, from extraterrestrial sources that tell you in quite a great deal amount of detail about what's been happening and what's happening in this part of the world. And in particular, the ones that I've been reading lately and in the past uh, are the Pleiadians. Um, Barbara Marciniak has a number of very interesting books about this. And what the Pleiadians say explicitly is that they were at our place in development uh, a million years ago, a million years ago, and that uh, as they advanced uh, throughout all this, this millennium, uh, what they have done as uh, taken on a role of trying to seed and expand and nurture life throughout the universe. And so that's the kind of role that they're playing with us right now. In fact, they have this kind of vested interest. Uh, some would say maybe that they even did some genetic modification engineering early on about uh, our species and so on. But the point is that there is some um, there's a, a big plan and there's a process and this has happened before. This is not unique. It's not random by uh, humans. I mean, this is not just happening. Uh, and uh, although there are, we have the chance to make decisions within the larger kind of framework. And, uh, but this is, uh, you know, this is not virgin ground in a, in a sense. This has happened before and there's history around that. Now, as a matter of fact, what the esoteric and the ancient literature says is that five times in the past, there have been other civilizations on this planet that have gotten to a level of potential kind of evolution or, 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 or consciousness or call it what you would like, and, and they have failed for any of a number of reasons, sometimes natural disasters. In some cases, you know, in the case of Atlantis, they say that uh, they, they, their technology outran their ability to make reasonable kind of decisions about what it was all about. And before that, there was Lemuria, and before that, there was Mu, and so on. Uh, and, and so we are kind of like the fifth of the sixth kind of run at uh, civilization and the increasing consciousness uh, increasing the consciousness of the civilization up to a place where we can move into the next stage of development. Now, consciousness is nothing but awareness. I mean, that's synonymous, that consciousness. And so when you raise your consciousness, you kind of weigh, raise your awareness about the larger reality that we live in and how you fit into that and how it all kind of, how you engage and how you, how you 
get into the middle of all of that. And, um, uh, and so that's uh, kind of the situation that we're in right now. Now, the interesting thing about that is that there's, there are a moments of kind of opening in terms of the, this evolutionary process where there can be rapid kind of increases in consciousness. And, um, and those seem to be defined by changes of the kind of the energy situation on this planet and with human beings and the planet in general. And by that I mean is that, for instance, right now, our sun and our solar system is moving into a different area in space. The uh, Voyager satellites back in the early 70s have made this uh, very clear, and the Pleiadians say this in very explicit terms, that you're moving into a new energetic area, and what it's doing is that it's affecting your stars and it's affecting your bodies because there's, there's, there's a different composition. And, and what it is doing is allowing this kind of energetic, uh, this uh, evolutionary kind of push. And, and at the same time, there are, there are the, uh, uh, as the, our solar system moves through space over time, what happens is it moves above and below the, uh, the galactic plane. Now, this is interesting and important because when you think about our galaxy, it is a spiral galaxy. It's flat. It's like a, uh, uh, it's like a platter, like a plate, right? And what that means is that the energy, the organizing energy at the center of the galaxy is a narrow beam that organizes all those stars into that narrow kind of plane. And so it's, if you will, if you, it's got a very high kind of, uh, of intensity right at the, at, the, at the middle of that plane and it falls off on the sides because there's no stars and other things around. And what happens is that our solar system goes up and down in a sinusoidal kind of way every 26,000 years and passes through the middle of the plane of the galaxy. And what that means is that the energies coming out from the center of the galaxy are moving through the middle of that beam width. And for 36 years, scientists have figured out, you've got this high kind of period of time when you've got a significant kind of increase in energy. And it's kind of, and, and what it's turned out to be that it's kind of centered on, on December of 2012. So it's 18 years on one side and 18 years on the other side. And so it increases throughout up to the middle in the, on December 2012 and then decreases as it goes out. But this is an extraordinary kind of period of time. And it's almost like a door opens uh, in terms of the, uh, the elevation or the opportunity for humans to evolve. And uh, when you look into the esoteric literature and some of this stuff, what they say is that it is almost kind of like there's a cosmic kind of moment of opportunity that exists. And in the past, humans have not been able to kind of run through that hole, the door when it opens up. But this time, we did. And there are multiple kind of sources, again, unconventional. I mean, you got to work in this weirdo strange place here if you, were, if you want to play in this area. Well, let me just interrupt and say that I read a lot of the stuff that you send me, and it includes people who are channeling. And that's where the law of one came from and the Seth stuff. And exactly. So there are these unconventional sources. This is like Ouija boards on nuclear power, but they're very articulate, very well written, very coherent in their articulation. Go on. Yeah, yeah, they are. It's very detailed. And so it's not, it's hard to, if you really read it with an open mind, it's hard to convince yourself that somebody's just making this stuff up. It's pretty good, pretty good stuff. But anyway, they say we made it. So we, some sources say we passed the marker. It's kind of, you know, you got over the hill and you're going down the other way. And so, and this is what's important to the kind of the subject of the day here is that this is inevitable. This evolutionary path that humans are on is an inevitability. We passed the, the time when it was uncertain and it's, and it, and it's, and it's really in, inevitable. And so, so what you need to think about conceptually about this thing is 
What is the animating force underneath this evolutionary process for those of us who are playing in this space? Well, I'd suggest to you it's hope. Hope is the animating kind of, kind of uh, outlook and, and, and orientation that has to be there because if you lose hope, you're not working your way up this evolutionary track. And that's interesting because that means, for instance, none of us are all going to die from a catastrophic solar flare, that uh, the, 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 the global economic system is not going to complex, uh, collapse because that would drive everybody into fear. And fear is the antithesis of where we're going here. What we're going in is into this space of extraordinary opportunity and openness. Remember, this is about an expanding awareness. And this is a, not about contraction and fear and control, which is happening on the technographic, technological side of this. And so all of the, you know, you call them the Google Gestapo and all of these kind of guys are all on one side of this kind of equation. And there's this hope and this new track going up the new side. And what this means is that no matter what is presented to us in front of us, is there has got to be a path through the middle of this for those of us that are trying to provide leadership into this new space. And that path has got to be defined by hope. Uh, it can't be fear, it can't be other kind of things because it is in fact, in being confronted with these unusual situations or these confrontations or these seeming threats and everything is the literal mechanism that allows humanity to rise to a new occasion, find a new solution and, you know, operate from a different space. It's the old Einsteinian kind of notion that you can't solve a problem from the level that it was built at. And so you are, we are being systematically driven into places that are forcing us to make decisions. Juan O'Sullivan says, you'll pick a lane, right? This is what, and everybody's going to have to do this going in the coming years because this is the, is the split. And so what it, what's important here is that there is a path through the middle of this, and that path is defined by hope. And no matter what shows up within this scenaric framework, no matter what shows up, there's a, there's, a, there's a path for the good guys in the White Hats to the middle of the thing. Now, they, you know, that obviously leads us to, a, you know, looking at the, at the present kind of political landscape. And when you look across the political landscape, you see this rather in, in the United States, at least, this rather stark kind of set of options between one that is really clearly all tied into technology and they want to be more control and lock you down and give you shots and mess with your DNA and all of that kind of stuff. And there's this other path about the opening up and more options and human development and other kinds of things. And in just start kind of political terms, there's Trump on one side and there's Biden on the other side. John, so, let me just interject very quickly, because what I see on the technology side that you talk about is the deep state and the satanic pedophiles and Lucifer. And then on the other side, where Trump is trying to deliver power to the people, I see faith, family, farms, and freedom. So what we're talking about is hope in community. Absolutely. Those contrasts. Absol absolutely. Absolutely. You've got all of those. Yes. Uh, that's, that's the situation. But it has to happen. I mean, if you buy into the logic that says we're making it and it's inevitable, I mean, we're going to have twists and turns as you get there and you get confronted by various kind of things to try to move you up to kind of higher levels, but you're, you're going to get there from here. And so um, uh, I think that as you look into the, the coming days, uh, that there is really a lot of room for hope and a lot of opportunity because this is almost from my point of view, written in the stars. Now, there's a shortcoming with this kind of scenario kind of work, and that is you don't know what you don't know, right? And so there's, a, there, you know, there could be, the, 
you know, maybe the aliens show up, maybe, you know, I don't know. Or a fake alien invasion and a yes. massive yeah. uh, cabal attack on everybody. In, in, and a, an in electromagnetic it, pulse bomb intended to make radiation sickness. Absolutely. But remember, there's always a path through it. And there is always a path that is, it may be a narrow path, it may be a winding path, but it is a path that has hope. And one of the things we're trying to do at the Arlington Institute is build a vision about what that new world at the end of that path is so that you can kind of, people can get together and, 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 and get entrained and start to contribute to building an alternative to the kind of the status quo. John, you and I talked in the past. I've seen many, many books from serious scientists talking about how some of our nuclear weapons and some of our missiles have been disabled in very mysterious ways. So I just want to bring in the point here that part of our hope is the understanding that there's a larger cosmos with stellar civilizations, which apparently in 2012, we passed some kind of spiritual milestone in which we asked for help and now we're getting it. And that gives us the little yeah. je ne sais quoi bleu uh, yeah. that is going to carry us in and also protect us from what could have been a real pandemic or a real radiological yeah. attack on New York City or whatever. Now, you raise a very important point. And that is that this help is available to us. And I mean, they're there. and they're, But they kind of sit here like this, you know? And they got there and they say, they're waiting for us. Yeah, come on. Yeah. And, and we've got to ask. I mean, this is an argument, I think, for, for prayer, how, however you define that, for our president in this process. Because to the extent that we reach out and engage and ask for this kind of help, then they become very, very responsive to the whole thing. And so I think it's a time of a really quite interesting uh, opportunity as we kind of work our way through this. And, and, the, and the whole, the essence of hope is that you can't get yourself bogged down and, and give a lot of energy and all a lot of stress and get yourself all wrapped up around all of the possible ways in which somebody is gonna screw with this thing. Hope I mean, you, is the antidote to fear. Yes, sir. It is. It absolutely is. And so I think this is a wonderful time. And so if uh, some of your uh, listeners are interested in more of this kind of stuff, I'm starting, as you know, I'm starting a, a video blog and it's going to be available and they can come to arlingtoninstitute.org and they can uh, learn more about it all. Arlingtoninstitute.org. John, I respect you enormously. You're one of the people that helped me navigate all of this. God bless you, God bless America, and God bless the President of the United States of America and the First Lady, Melania Trump. Forward together in hope, faith, family, and freedom. Thanks, Robert. Nice to be with you.